examined. He can be seen by the jury. He can see the witnesses. All of those steps would satisfy the constitutional requirements for attending a trial. And again, this is unprecedented. This case has been uh, pending for six years. And we have heard time and time and time again from the defense a demand for a speedy trial. We are now in the trial. The defendant is receiving his right to a trial. He's getting his day in court, but he's refusing to waive his right to be physically present. And that contradicts every demand he has made thus far. We can assure attorney client uh, communication through technology. And frankly, Your Honor, we don't want to create an incentive for defendants to attempt to go. We don't, we don't know what this defendant has been doing, what precautions he's been taking. We don't want to create an incentive for defendants to go out and try to contract a disease in order to delay a trial. Um, Your Honor, this community has been waiting six years for this trial. This jury has dedicated three weeks of their lives to this trial. And this community, community deserves for this case to go to this jury uh, this week. And if, if that alternative is not followed, then the state would certainly support uh, the court's suggestion that we wait the seven days, allow the defendant to come back next Wednesday um, after um, he is no longer symptomatic, and uh, proceed with the trial at that point. Thank you, Your Honor. Well, Judge, I certainly understand um, and, and agree with much that the prosecution has said. Um, everybody wants closure in this case as possible. Um, I think trying to do the trial in the next seven days is problematic. Um, I mean, I wouldn't be able to come in because I have been in contact with someone I know has COVID, and, uh, and I'm a bit concerned about that. I, I should say there were there's at least one journalist who became um, ill on, on after Friday of last week. And so there's some issues. I, I, the, the seven days is something in that attractive because um, it doesn't, well, he, he has most of the symptoms. It doesn't look like he, uh, he's going to be hospitalized or anything like that. It seems to be fairly rare now with, with the new uh, versions of COVID. Uh, and I, I had no symptoms. My co-counsel tested negative this morning to see we thought of an abundance of caution. Um, so maybe uh, if jurors can stay, uh, can put, be put on hold until next Wednesday, and, and we'll see if we can, uh, if we, if, uh, if the court can proceed at that time. I think it's a logistical nightmare if I'm on Zoom and my client's on Zoom and the witness, I guess, is present, although some of them are on Zoom. Um, you know, I know the court would want to work this around if at all possible, but I think the one week and then presence makes the most sense of the options we have. So the rapid testing that the state suggested that's available at the wounds, you have to at least for counsel, and then you could get your results in two hours. What about that option? I'm willing to go, and uh, sure, okay. that sounds good. All right. I mean, I, I think there's a way that we, we can continue this trial. We've just got to figure out the way to do it. I 100% um, agree with the state. I know defense is interested in finishing this trial as well. Um, so I think we're all going to have to be a little more flexible and creative about how we're going to get this done so that we can get it done. I don't want to declare this trial at this point, and I'm not willing to. So I got um, Luke, the head of the jury division, present here to check in and see what we can do as far as keeping the jurors. So, Luke, if you wouldn't mind um, coming up just because the defense is on Zoom and letting us know how much longer we have with these particular jurors. Yeah, either one is fine. Okay. Let's see a little closer so you can hear you. All right. Um, and so the, my name is Luke Tessman. I'm the jury 
uh, program manager at the Second Judicial District Court. Um, these jurors' term of service does end. It's Friday. This Friday? Yes, the 29th. Um, we, we have used jurors past their term of service before. Um, usually we ask the jurors to see if they're willing to do that, though. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's been done before. And the reason we just kind of talk to them about it is because you, they usually do only make plans till the end of their service. So we kind of just, you know, see if that's something that they'd be able to do. They'd be willing to do. Yeah. Okay. It, it basically is being, um, they're no longer under summons. So summons, so they can not show up. But it would be more of a, um, a gesture of goodwill that they continue to show up. Correct. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you, Lucas. So what we should do, the jury should be showing up momentarily. We can make that inquiry of them, um, release them. Well, before we talk about releasing them for the day, uh, we'll make that inquiry of them. Um, I'm wondering, defense, if you'd be willing to go do the rapid test as soon as we're done this morning over at the balloon fiesta. Um, because my, my feeling is if you get that result, um, a negative result from both counsel, uh, that then you can appear this afternoon. We could have Mr. Gonzalez appear on Zoom or Google Meet um, because, you know, Mr. Grayson's suggestion that, you know, they'll waive any right to continue with the redirect of Lewis and they won't call any other witnesses sort of gets rid of the confrontation issue. I think that could potentially be problematic because it would be defense witnesses. So I think then the remaining issue would be client attorney communication throughout trial. And I just, you know, sort of want to state for the record what I've observed during trial as far as client attorney interaction. Um, so that this is clear for the record that of course I'm constantly sort of scanning the courtroom for all kinds of things. And you know, one of the things that I've noticed is that there hasn't been a whole lot of attorney client communication. I've seen communication between Mr. Moya your investigator and Mr. Gonzalez, you know, a handful of times throughout the testimony, definitely no more than six or seven times. Um, but as far as Mr. Aarons or Mr. Dangler consulting with their client uh, or Mr. Gonzalez needing to consult with them, I frankly haven't seen it happen at all, at all. Um, and so I'm less concerned about that issue, but if that is something that defense is concerned about, then we accommodate it. And I think it's worthwhile to, you know, be creative and figure out a way to a lot of communication. And it's, we could do a jury instruction to the jury explaining that because of the circumstances, you know, there can't be, you know, you're not sitting at the same table together, so they're going to have to be more patient and allow time for you, Mr. Aarons, and you, Mr. Bangler, to um, have that private conversation with your client, and we'll make the arrangements in court so that that can happen on the spot. I won't make you wait until the witness is done testifying. If there's something you need to consult with your client about or he with you, we take a break immediately so that can happen. Um, and so I think there's a workaround there. I think the confrontation issue would be resolved. But what are your thoughts on that, Mr. Ernst? Well, there have been some uh, times where, where he reminded me or informed me of facts. Um, the one that comes to mind, I don't mind uh, sharing this, is when um, he remembered that a neighbor spoke to him uh, while he was fixing the window, um, and that was a benefit. And there, but the court's right, you know, an actual five or six times that something uh, significant came up during, uh, usually we would talk during recesses, I'm not sure, I haven't researched, but I, I assume uh, the confrontation right uh, is not limited to prosecution witnesses, but we're certainly willing to to do whatever accommodation uh, the court directs. Um, 
to, to make this possible. Uh, certainly, we will we will go as soon as that hearing is adjourned. We'll go over to the balloon fiesta and find out where we can get a rapid test. And we should have his results uh, today, I'm hoping. I'm not sure why it takes a little longer at, at her care, but, uh, but uh, I'm pretty confident, given that his wife, uh, who's a nurse, also tested positive in the symptoms, that he's going to be positive. And, and I'm pretty convinced that we're not going to be positive. And looking at the um, screening question for the court for non-employees, um, it's if you've had contact with someone who's been diagnosed with COVID, and by contact is three feet or less for three or more minutes. So I was looking at the um, configuration of the courtroom today. Mr. Moya definitely was within three feet of Mr. Gonzalez, but it does not appear to me, and I don't have a tape measure out, but I'm looking at just the size of the chairs that definitely Mr. Aaron's, you are not, and Mr. Bango is even further away, but Mr. Aaron's is not within three feet of Mr. Gonzalez from the configuration in the court. Of course, that doesn't account for anything, any contact you had outside of court, but from what I've observed, it's been more than three feet. So, let me just ask Mr. Grayson this, as far as that test at Balloon Fiesta, is that a PCR test? It is, Your Honor, it's a PCR test, and we checked on availability this morning. There are appointments available. Great. So the PCR test is what we would require, a negative PCR test to allow you to come back into the building. Let's do that. Um, let's have you go test right now. It's 9 o'clock right now. Um, I'm going to bring in the jury, tell them what's going on. Um, I'm going to have you go do the test, and let's try and reconvene at 1. If it's, if it's a, um, if you can't get in right away, and I'm going to have you, Mr. Aaron, while we're getting the jury assembled, see if you can get an appointment for yourself, Mr. Dangler, right now. Um, you know, by 9.30 or 10, we could plan on reconvening at 1.30. If they come up positive, then we'll, uh, we'll address that when we need to. Let's assume you're negative. We'll get, two, we'll get two media carts set up in here so that your client can have his own media cart uh, with his ability to see everything that's going on, not on Zoom. So he won't be with the rest of the group. We'll have him on his own um, platform. Okay? So that's what we're going to do. So I should direct my witnesses to appear at 1 30 at South Side. That's correct. So, Mr. Um, Grayson, can you give me the link for the PCR test at Bloom Fiesta? And I'll give that to Mr. Aaron. Yes, Your Honor. I'll leave that up now. That link is book, B O O K, dot curative, C U R A T I V E, dot com, slash sites, S I T E S, slash three four three nine zero. All right, Mr. Ernie, I'm going to put it in the chat. I'm going to put it in the chat for you, okay? Let me see if I can do that here because we have it limited. All right, I'm going to have Nicole email it to you right now. Okay, that works. I'm going to send it to Nicole, and then she'll send it to you. Thank you. 
sure notes, but it's in the same dirt, so I'm going to mark it as court 15. The defendant and his investigator keep talking during witness interviews. I think she means testimony, and it's becoming extremely distracting. Second note, yesterday evening after leaving court, three of us jurors were walking outside and I saw a man, which I'm pretty sure was taking pictures of us. It could be just my paranoia right now, and I don't want to make a big deal of it. I just wanted you to be aware of the situation. So as far as uh, Mr. Moya, I have heard him as well. I've also heard, as I think the parties are aware, despite uh, the court warning Mr. Gonzalez's family that if they continue to talk, they'd be removed from the courtroom. I've heard them clear today up here cussing and um, commenting on the testimony, especially when Ms. Gailey was examining the witness. So they've been uh, removed from the courtroom permanently until this trial is over. Um, as far as Mr. Moya, I'll leave that to you, Mr. Aaron, to have a conversation with him. It's not helpful. It's really not helpful to Mr. Gonzalez. And should we ask the court to reconsider as to his, uh, the defendant's wife, the nurse, she has not been talking and has been following the court's uh, ruling. And uh, I understand as to the mother and the brother that they can appear by Zoom. I as it turns out, she wouldn't be able to come immediately because she had symptoms. But, uh, but maybe later, later on, depending on how the case progresses, um, so I have seen her myself uh, having issues with certain portions of the testimony and making statements. Of course, I can't see her mouth, but I can see her body language and her leaning over to say something, and then I hear her words all the way up here. So it's been all three of them. And if I can hear them, certainly the jurors sitting right in front of them can hear them. So anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge later, but as it stands right now, we're not permitted to Okay, so the jurors are all here. So I'm going to tell them to return at 1.30. Um, but you want to see first, Mr. Aaron, if you can get an appointment? We'll wait. Why don't you try and do it right now? And that would be the plan. I do have this side.
long questionnaire, but it looks like I have a 10 o'clock appointment. Awesome. And I'll try to do the same for you after I finish this long questionnaire. Okay. And you said, um, Mr. Grayson, it was open two hours? That's correct, Your Honor. Great. I should point out to the court, it says that you could pass five to seven days after exposure, but we're going to ignore that. I know, that's sort of um, standard, but this is what we're left with. It's the best we can do. Your Honor, if I may, um, I did, I don't know Mr. Aaron's plan with um, Ms. Martin, but I did speak to Gary Mitchell last night, and he, um, while he didn't come today, given the news, um, he said he is available to appear remotely as needed, but I think he'll need some notice if he needs to get here physically. Okay. Was she speaking of Mr. Werner? Sorry, so she, um, so what Ms. Staley said was that she was in contact with Mr. Mitchell last night, he did not appear today because of the news about the COVID, but he is available um, and he could be here remotely.
tilt as well. At 10 o'clock? He is booked, yeah. At, at 10? Okay. At 10 also. All right. So I have an email into administration to make sure that that's going to suffice for the negative PCR test and that you, neither one of you have been within three feet of the defendant, correct? Uh, yes, we'll say that. And for the record, I am going to... I am going to... For the three-minute time period. Right, for the three minutes. I was pretty close to him last night. And you said that was a short period of time? It was a short period of time, maybe a minute, maybe two minutes. I don't think it was three minutes, but I was speaking with him pretty close. Okay. So what close I'm... enough to hear his voice and know his voice is wrong and ask him about it and saying he had he probably had allergies. I'm gonna get a tape measure down here um, when we adjourn and see how close those chairs are together instead of eyeballing it to make sure that's less that's more than three feet. Um okay, so like I said, I emailed administration to make sure that this is going to suffice as far as our protocol. I think it will, but I just want to double check that and be sure. So at this point, what we can do is bring in the jurors and tell them, plan on being back at 1.30 unless they hear from us. Um, and I'm, I'd like for either way the attorneys to be back at 1.30. We can open up Zoom again. You guys can come on Zoom or in person, however you want to be here. Um, and we could check in at that point and see if we're going to go forward. So have your witnesses, let's plan that we're going to go forward at 1.30. And Judge, do you want to plan for 2 o'clock for the jury that we have time for during the sure. jury? That's a good idea. So we'll plan for 2 o'clock for the jury, 1.30 for the parties. Um, of oh. course, if you get a, if you get a um, positive PV, a PCR test, right. yeah, that changes everything. Actually, I'm sorry, Your Honor, we'll have to rest in front of the jury, so we, that doesn't make sense. I'm sorry. Okay, so still 1.30. 1.30 for everybody. So we'll bring the jury in, we'll tell them what's going on, have them come back at 1.30, but to keep their phones close in case something changes, we'll let them know. And then I want to get you out of here so you can make your appointment. So let's be real quick. So we're not far from the Lord Piazza. All right, perfect. I'll make this real, real quick. You may be seated. All right, ladies and gentlemen, unfortunately, um, uh, Mr. Gonzalez has tested positive for COVID. So we're trying to find a way to continue with this trial. So what we're doing at this point, pursuant to uh, Supreme Court orders, is we have to have everybody who was in relatively close contact with him tested. Um, and so the attorneys for defense are going to be doing that today, this morning, within moments. So we're, they're present on Zoom. Um, but we're going to make sure that they make it to their appointment. It's a quick test, so we should have results in two hours. Um, if they come back negative and it's okay with my court administration, we will continue with the trial this afternoon at 1.30. The defendant will be appearing remotely. He will not be here in person. Um, so we'll make arrangements for that in the meantime. If for some reason the attorneys are unable to return because of a positive test, we will be discussing the possibility of um, delaying the trial. And so that's something I want you to think about. 
is that we would have to delay it about seven days. You guys were only on jury duty until the end of this week. Um, and so if you would be um, willing to stay on another couple days, that would be um, greatly appreciated by me, by the parties, by the community to get this case resolved. Um, but I do understand, and I believe there was one juror that said she has travel plans on August 5th. So that's a consideration. But I want you to think about that in case we are unable to convene this afternoon at 1.30. We're doing everything in our power to see if we can do it. I do not want to inconvenience you more, um, but we would really like to get, get this case done. So stay close to your phones. We'll be in contact with you if something changes and you don't need to be back at 1.30, we'll let you know. Um, but please plan on being back here at 1.30 because I have a feeling we're gonna be able to go forward. Okay, we'll see you soon. All right. Mr. Ernst, um, Mr. Dingley, you're free to go. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. 